Baron speaking to you from the Club Pronto, Hollywood's most exclusive nightly, the restful rendezvous of our restless stars. I wish you were here. I sincerely wish you were here. Why don't you drop in? There is always room for one more. Neither have I. Oh, I think it's all right. Come on. There's nobody in the place. Hmm, maybe they're not open yet. Flowers for the lady? Oh, sure. Five dollars with tax. Good evening, folks. Oh, good evening. Do you think it's all right if we... Step right this way. I'll give you a ring size seat. Look. Two customers. Good. Now we can have a bridge game. I guess we came a little too early. Oh, no, no. You're not too early, sir. You see, our guests are very exclusive. And none of them come here until all the rest arrive. Oh. And I might mention that we are famous for our crepes for there. Oh, no, thank you. We don't drink. Honey, that isn't a drink. That's probably the name of one of their entertainers. It stood for everything, but this is it. This is it. This is the finale. Something wrong? Something wrong. Everything is wrong. No wonder we haven't got no customers. That precision. You precision. Look, look. Go ahead and read it. That Chuck Hammond. I'll strangle him. Siempre está diciendo lo mismo. Siempre está diciendo lo mismo. You see what you have done to me. You told me that he was the greatest precision in Hollywood. And what do I hear? Chuck Hammond. Chuck Hammond. Chuck Hammond. Hey, uh, baby, in the years to come, you'll be proud to tell your grandchildren that you once took care of the hat worn by Chuck Hammond, the guy who was first to say that the only thing that can make money without advertising is the mint. All right, Chuck. Save your act for Eddie. Cigarettes, Mr. Hammond? Oh, you betcha. Say, listen, if you ever want to get into pictures, you won't have to fill out a form. <laughs> hey, here comes trouble. Chuck Hammond. Hiya, Chief. What's cooking? Nothing is cooking. It's just me. I'm burning. What's the matter? What's the matter? You have ruined me. That's what's the matter. Here. Look at this paper. You've washed me up. Uh-oh. 
Look, boys, that's just a typographical error. That's supposed to say, guests succumb to spell of rumba band. Of course, anybody knows that that's what it's supposed to say. Never mind what they're supposed to say. I know what I'm supposed to say, and I'm going to say it right now. Oh, wait a minute, don't get excited. Excited? How about me? Don't you think I can get excited? Mr. Hammond, I am asking your resignation. Now, don't get excited, Chief. Don't do something you'll regret not here in your club. Remember your slogan, Hollywood's merriest nightclub. Yes, and remember who wrote it for you. Chuck Hammond. Yes, and this is the last thing he'll ever write. And now, Senor LeBaron, if it is not asking you too much, you may create a little noise, which you will call music. And if it is loud enough, we might bring some good customers here. All right, all right. Remember what I said. Do you think we'd better get out? Hey, mister, is it a raid? I wish it was. Confidentially, anybody that comes here and spends his money, I think he's crazy. What I am saying, I'm going lunatics. Oh, I am so sorry. That was very unusual. As a matter of fact, this place is very quiet and exclusive. Uh, go ahead and enjoy yourself. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm welcome. Do you want to dance? Do you want to dance? not interested in whether a moving picture actress rides or swings or paddles a canoe. Space is at a premium. She ought to know that. Hey, Chuck. You suppose that girl's in pictures? I don't know. Maybe better find out. Look, go up and tell her how I dreamed up the idea about the footprints in front of the Chinese theater. Tell her I never take less than $100 a week, but maybe she can talk me into taking 50 Remember to mention that Gilda Parker is my client. Always remember to mention Gilda Parker. Tell her how I took Gilda from a nobody and press agent to her into being one of the biggest movie stars of the day. You know the line. Go ahead. Look, Gilda. I produced the last three pictures you made for Zenith Studios. Nobody has more authority to tell you this than I have. Joe, I often wonder how a man like you can be as naive and transparent as you are. I'm afraid I don't get what you mean. Simply this, Joe. My contract is expiring. As you know, I'm demanding a 20% raise. So, as president of Zenith Pictures, you've come to tell little Gilda how tough things are. That you want me to sign at the old salary, isn't that the idea? I'm afraid that isn't it, Gilda. I don't know how to say this. You know how much we think of you, how much you've meant to our company. All right, Joe, stop stalling. The suspense is killing me. We're not going to renew your contract, Gil. Go on. I'm sorry, but these things happen sooner or later to every moving picture star. You're a sensible girl, and you realize that no star can go on forever. You're simply not in the running anymore, Gil. There was a time you couldn't pick up a newspaper or magazine that didn't carry a picture of Gilda Parker. That doesn't happen anymore. And most important of all, no box office appeal. We've taken a test vote, and we find that... In other words, I'm washed up. I'm sorry. Sorry? About what? Come on, Joe. Let's have a drink. That's an idea. No, I'm not in pictures. We don't even see pictures very often at Shady Acres. Shady Acres? What's that? Well, Ma and Pa happen to own Shady Acres. It's a pretty big farm, if I do say so myself. You see, Janie lives in Hawkinsville, but she and her stepfather came over to help us out. Tommy and I came to Los Angeles to see the United States Government Employment Bureau. Are well, you going to work for the government? Oh, no. We've got to get help for the farm somehow. The fruit's rotting on the trees, and we're all ready to plant a late crop. And pretty soon it'll be harvesting time, and there's no help to be had. Chuck. Hmm? Feel something? 
No, I don't feel like it. Don't you feel that printer's ink coming to the front? That old Chuck Hammond hunt? Aren't you tingling? Just what are you talking about? May I talk to you for a moment, please? Will you excuse us? Oh, yes. Daisy, is this not one of your goofy ideas? Look, I don't know whether you're dumb or just playing dumb. Well, I ain't playing. Don't you know that the greatest idea in the world is knocking on that dome of yours? Suppose you tell me what it is. That yokel over there just solved all of your problems. Farm help. Farm help? Baby, will you stop beating around the bushel? I haven't got a farmer on my list. That's what you think. Every one of your plants are potential farmers. There are thousands of people all over America farming, and they are now farming. Now I know that you're crazy. Can't you just see Gilda Parker pitching hay, or Nancy DeWitt milking a cow, or canvas back Kirby? Wait a minute. Well, it's the greatest idea I ever had. Baby. Go back to that table and tell that kid his farm labor troubles are over. Tell him to skip back to that farm of his and wait there, and I'll be along with 40 of the most talented farm hands he ever saw in his life. I'm going along and try to sell Gilda Parker on the idea. Anything she does, the rest of my clients will do. Get going, baby. And I think I will find something for you to do up there, too, babe. See, baby, you'll not only be helping yourself, but you'll be doing something worthwhile. This is going to put you right back in those topical headlines where you were before that Joe Burton spoiled the parade. This is your chance to show them up. You can make them eat those words. Chuck, I always figured if you got an idea in your head, it would die of solitary confinement. But I've got to hand it to you. I think you've got something. That a girl! I'll see you later. i got to go wake up the other 19 clients. <laughs> DeWitt, widow of the late oil can millionaire, internationally known patroness of the art, take a bow now. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, let me give you the idol of thousands. Did I say thousands? I mean millions. The idol of millions. Canvas back, Kirby. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to meet you, folks, Jim. Hey, who are they? Oh, them is college girls helping us out. I went to school once. <laughs> But it couldn't fool me with that stuff. I quit. It did, huh? Why? Well, he tried to learn me to spell caters with a P. <laughs> Is it? Well, yeah. oh, yeah. Come on, I want you to 
want you to meet her. Come on, maybe we get something to eat. Where the radio road? I don't know, where are they? Hey, this must be it. This must be it. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, what a guess. Hey, where's Sid? I don't know. It must be down near the differential here. Hey! Hey, come on out of there! Come on. Hey, what's the matter with Sid? I don't know. Sid, are you all right? Then why are you fellas riding the rods? No reservations. You and your ideas. Come on, we gotta meet Ma. Hey, Chuck, next time get us a seat, will you? What are you kicking for, boys? You were better off under there. It was hot in the bus. Are you oh, kidding? Was what what a character he is. A press agent. What's with the eater, Pop? I can eat it now. Hiya, Pop. Gee, I feel fine, Pop. Hello, Nancy. Oh, Canvas. Isn't it marvelous? Oh, the country's so wonderful. It's too bad they can't have it in the city. Boy, this is great. Smell that air. Do I go for this nature stuff? Hey, maybe you'd be good at boxing avocados, huh? Sure, watch his weight. Bring him around and I'll moiter him. Oh, you mean them things that you eat? Why don't you say so? Oh, Mr. Pot Spotter. Yeah, they... my name is Spot Potter, not Pot Spotter. Oh, dear. Isn't there anything you could do about it? Huh? Oh, well, anyway, I'm Nancy DeWitt. How do you do? Uh, oh, we've met. Of course we have. You're Pot Spotter. That's Spot what I... Potter. Oh, that's right. Sounds just like throwing mud against the wall, doesn't it? Worse than that. But anyway, he's very sweet. Don't you think so? Oh, sure. Oh, Mr. Pot. Oh. oh, Mr. Spot. That wasn't very nice of you to run away from me, especially when I wanted to ask you something. Tell me, moles are blind, aren't they? Yes, ma'am. And they live in the ground, don't they? Yes, ma'am. And potatoes live in the ground, and yet they have eyes. Why is that? Well, I guess the souls of taters can see if the moles are coming after them. <laughs> oh, wonderful. You know, this farm is filled with curiosities. Moles and potatoes and Mr. Spotter. Oh, Candace, dear. Candace, come here. Come here and learn all about nature. It's so interesting. Mr. Spotter told me the most fascinating thing. Do you know what he told me just now about the mole? And it's very fascinating. Well, folks, that means supper. You two think you can get your mind off each other long enough to eat? I think so, Paul. I didn't know whether you dressed for dinner. Well, we don't exactly undress. Uh, what Maul means is, you won't find that costume very useful on the farm. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this plentiful repast in such times of stress. We thank you for sending these good people to us that we may help provide sustenance and reasonable comfort for our boys at the front, that they may restore peace, tolerance, and happiness to the world you gave us. Amen. Would you pass the butter, please? Oh, sure. The butter? Yeah, I guess I kind of made a mistake. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for coming out here to help us. Pa and Ma and me will do our best to make you comfortable. The work's going to be hard, but well, we'll have our moments of relaxation. Ma and Pa have always said that relaxation stimulates work. And I'm sure that with so many talented entertainers, there'll be plenty of stimulation. <laughs> <laughs> we here on the farm feel that a good one-third of this war belongs to us. The boys on all fronts must be fed and fed well. Miss Parker believes that 
If this movement can be multiplied by several thousand farms, victory will be hastened. And Mr. Hammond has kindly agreed to publicize the idea, and I'm sure that thousands of other patriotic people like yourselves will respond. If that happens, you folks have done something bigger than I'm capable of describing. We start to work at 5.30 tomorrow morning. Oh, brother, not 5.30. I guess that's about all I can say, except this. Remember, you're all soldiers on one of the fronts of this war, and a very important front. pitching hay. Well, to be truthful with you, I'd rather be pitching wool. But war is war. You know, I was kind of surprised to see you up before 6 this morning. You was? Why? Well, everybody knows you never get up before 10. Yeah. Look, I don't know what I'd do without you, but I'd rather. <laughs> Wait a minute, I, I was only kidding. Oh, it's all right, then, if he was only kidding, that's different. To hear you guys talk, you think I spent all of my time falling down? Or if not, you spend half of it getting up. That's all, brother. No, no, That's no. all. made his little speech last night, he gave me an idea. He said, relaxation stimulates work, remember? Uh-huh. Well, back east in the big factories, they've got the very same idea. As a matter of fact, the theater wing furnishes what they call the noonday follies. Now, why can't we do the same thing right here? Well, we sure. sure we can. we got plenty of talent. The more impromptu it is, the better. What do you say? Well, sure. Let everybody pitch in and put one together. Yeah. Oh, What's the matter, honey? Aren't you hungry? Sure I am. I'm starving. But who can eat with hands like these? Look, I can't even hold a knife and fork. Blisters. That's the spirit, Gilda. Why, you should be proud of such marks of distinction. They are the badge of the back to the farm movement, the most important movement in our country today. Why, you wouldn't complain about such little trifles, would you? It works too hard. Honey, don't you see what I'm trying to do? I'm just thinking of your future. Here's a chance for us to tie into something really big. Well, that's swell. Had a baby, Gilda. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Come on, they'll be waiting for us.
Hello. Oh, Jimmy? Yeah. Hey, what do you think of the show? Oh, it's marvelous. It's terrific. That's the, that's the greatest show I ever saw. That's a burn. It's terrific, you know? Yeah, solid stuff, boy. In the groove. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'll see you later, eh? Okay, baby. Everybody back to work. Come on, get a move on. Everybody back to work, one o'clock. Kansas, if we're going to have entertainment, we should have beautiful scenery. Go get my tape. You and Sheik will groove it. Come on, let's go. Gee, Miss Parker, I, I sure did like your singing. Tommy, must you call me Miss Parker? Oh, you mean I can call you Gilda? Why not? Well, gee, I guess I better be getting back to work. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, Gilda, you like that kid? The very idea. You bet it's the very idea, the very idea I've been looking for. What are you talking about? Now what's running through that one-track mind of yours? Now look, sweet, I don't think this can miss. I think you got that kid hypnotized. So what, she says. So this is what you do. Look, I want you to take the kid and give him the words. Did you ever get up there? Well, there was a ladder, but somebody took it away. <sighs> well, just turn a jump. I won't let you fall. Okay. Oh! Oh, I was so frightened. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh. 
I guess I shouldn't have done that. Why? Didn't you want to? Oh, well, yes, I suppose I did. I wanted to. Did you? I mean, well, I don't know just how to explain it. She was. You could have knocked me over with a feather When you told me that I was the one You could have bowled me over with a four-leaf clover When you said I was second to none You could have knocked me higher than a comet When you whispered your love in my ear But when you said you adored me You completely floored me Oh, what a thrill being here Love is such a funny thing There's nothing stranger under the sun You were one in a million I was a million to one I always thought my heart changed with the weather Let it rain, let it pour, let it shine You could have knocked me over with a feather When you told me that you're mine, oh mine could have knocked me over with a feather When you said I was only for you You could have sent me reeling with that funny feeling When your heart skipped a beat or two You could have knocked me flatter than a pancake When I noticed that gleam in your eyes And when you said you missed me And you up and kissed me Oh, what a pleasant surprise such a funny thing There's nothing stranger under the sun You were one in a million And I was a million to one Whoever dreamed we'd ever get together It's too grand, it's too great to be true You, you could have knocked me over with a feather When you whispered I'm in love Well, I, I guess I'd better be getting back to work. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Oh. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. Oh, gee, I, I'm sorry I did it. Oh. Uh, goodbye. 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 You were great, baby. You were wonderful. So you like my acting, huh? Strictly first class. He could have knocked me over with the feather When they told me that I was the one You could have not made silly with the knee when they said I was second to none You could have knocked me flatter than a pancake When I found I had that appeal And when they said that they missed me And they up and they kissed me Then I knew that this time it's real Love is a just a funny thing I hope I'm not too bold and I could fall in love with you, but I'm just a little too old. You're telling me. Whoever thought we'd ever get together. It's too grand, it's too great to be true. You could have knocked me over with a feather. When they whispered I'm in love with you. Gee, fellas, I thought that was wonderful. I should get some for that. Me too. Yeah, you said it.
do you suppose Janie is? I don't know. I had missed her. Evidently, Tommy hasn't either. How are you doing, honey? Gee, I guess the farm's kind of dull to a glamorous person like you. Oh, Tommy, will you please stop calling me glamorous? Well, that's what you are. Hey, I'd like to take you someplace. Only there isn't any place to go? Yeah, of course. I know where there's a drive-in. Do you like excitement? Oh, I'd love it. Well, come on. Now, you wait here. I'll be right back. Bicycle? Sure, they haven't racked and put power yet. Come on. Okay. It's ought to be fun. Let's go. Let's drive out to a drive-in on a bicycle built for two. It's a lovely night, so balmy and so breezy. I can pedal while you take it easy. Let's drive out to a drive-in. Nowadays, it's a thing to do. Mr. Hickey's will be awfully proud of us. Who's that? Saving all that rubber on the family bus. Oh. One little mile, two little miles. We're almost there, my sweet. One little hug. And one little kiss. And, and too much in love to me. Let's drive out to a drive-in. I've a feeling before we're through. We will build ourselves a future on a bicycle built for two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On a bicycle built for two. It's a moonlight night so quiet and caressing. You can listen to my heart confessing. Let's drive out to a drive-in. Nowadays, it's a thing to do. We don't need an AB or C racing book. Pedaling on the highway to our drive-in nook. Oh, one little mile, two little miles. We're almost there, my sweet. One little hug and one little kiss and too much in love to me. Let's drive on to a drive-in if you feel just the way I do. We'll be starting life together on a bicycle bill for two. story. What a story. Did I tell you we'd make every front page in the country? How do you like that? The Los Angeles News, the San Francisco Chronicle, we're featured by all the wire services. Listen to this. Sending photographers immediately. I'll get it, honey. Hello? Yeah? Just a minute. New York Times. You're kidding. No, oh, on the level. Hello. Yes, this is Gilda Parker. Yes, of course he's a farmer boy, born and raised right here. What's that? Um, well, uh, just say I'm the happiest girl in the world. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Chicago Times? Yes, that's quite right. Just say I'm the happiest girl in the world. Oh, boy, are you happy, huh? Yes? Gilda Parker, Hollywood pinup girl, when pinned down by your reporter over long this morning, said the wedding would take place during harvest time. Gilda refused to say whether after marriage she would stay on the farm and raise wheat or return to Hollywood and continue producing corn. Her only comment was, just say I'm the happiest girl in the world. Now we take you to London for the latest war news. Happy 
cutest girl in the world. Oh. Yes? Chicago General? Chicago General. Yes, that's quite right. Just say I'm the happiest girl in the world. Oh, are you happy here, kid? I'll get this one. Hello? Denver Times? Yeah, well, uh, just say, quote, I'm the happiest girl in the world, unquote. <laughs> Telegram for you, Mom. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're sure kicking up a rumpus around here, ain't you? A genius. <laughs> we have completed organization and have unanimously chosen you president of AFC, Affiliated Farm Club. With hearty congratulations and thanks for a fine, unselfish effort in starting this patriotic movement, S.A. Walters, chairman. Oh, Gilda, is that terrific? We are home, baby. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Oh, this thing's going to spread like wildfire. This is big time stuff. Now they made you president of the whole thing. How do you like that? President of the AFC. Oh, brother, is that great? What'd you say? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Baby, don't you see this blows the whole thing wide open for us? Newspapers, radio, everything. Is it a natural or is it a natural? Hmm? Yes, yes, fine. What's the matter with you? Don't you feel well? I'm all right. I think I'll go upstairs and rest a while. See you later. Hi, babe. Take a look at that. If I thought you did that, which I do, if I'd murder you. Ooh, uh. girl in the world, unquote. <laughs> Is that telling them, babe? Are you the happiest girl in the world? And just wait till those newspaper reporters get here and the photographers will have they're you They're not spread... getting here, Chuck. Oh, yes, they are. I just phoned for them. They'll be here any minute now. I said they're not getting here because I don't want them. And you see that they stay away. Daisy, take a letter to the Alabama headquarters in Birmingham. Dear sir. Miss Parker, in answer to your... do you realize what you just said? I have more important things to take care of. Where was I? Uh, dear sir, in answer to your... Oh, yes. well, isn't to this your letter important, can... too? Chuck, will you please get out of here and let me do my work? Uh, AFC, I think that I should... Oh, gosh, I... Why don't you watch where you're going? Well, I was delivering a telegram. Well, go on, deliver your telegram. Well, I... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, it's for you. Hey, wait a minute. I don't know, and Dyson, you and your Eisenhower. I don't want to sit down. I don't stay to the third line. I'm not sit down. I hit you. See how 
that blue diminishes as it flows toward the horizon line. Yeah, it's fascinating. Fascinating, you know? The old barn's gonna be just like a real theater. I'm glad you like it, Camden. I like anything you do. Oh, you're sweet. Would you hand me that can of subdued mouse color? Sure. Over there. Subdued mouse? Maybe this is it, but it looks more like a knocked out rat. Why don't you just use the blue? You know, someday I'd like to paint you on canvas. I don't look good laying down. Uh, I'd rather have you paint me standing up like this. Oh, canvas, you're so funny. You know, I could always get along with you. Yeah, but could you get along without me? Well, what do you mean? Look, Nancy, there's something I've been trying to say for days, but every time I got ready to say it, something interfered, and then I forgot just how I had it, uh, how I had it, uh, what do you call that stuff when you put words together? Phrase. Yeah, that's it, phrase. Uh, don't you know what I'm trying to say, Nancy? I love you. You do? Yeah. Oh, canvas. And will you love me when I'm old and gray? Why should a couple of years make a difference? What? Oh, canvas. Hello, Spot. It's a nice Sunday, isn't it? That is, if it is Sunday, is it? It is, Sonny, and, and here's a letter for you. Oh, it's one of those quarterly dividends again. I was never so sick of money in my life. I wish my husband hadn't left me so much of it. Yes, hey, so. hey, hey, did you hear about Gilda being engaged to Tommy? Oh, I think it's wonderful. I think everybody should get married. Why don't you get married, Spot? Oh, I wouldn't have just any girl. But I could marry any girl I please. Yeah, but you don't please any. That reminds me, Smarty, here's a telegram for you. Did you collect? No, you get it for free. Why do I get a telegram? Tommy's the one that got engaged. Well, maybe somebody's congratulating you because you ain't the one. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Listen to this, will you, kids? Get a load of it. Owing to the shortage of men, we'd like you to meet the champion, Soccer McGraw. Me fighting the champ! Me and the champ! How do you like... Wait, there's more. The proceeds to be added to a fund for the building of the tanker agriculture. P.S. All hospital bills will be paid by us. It don't say nothing like that, Chuck. This is on the level. You mean you're gonna meet the champion? That's what it says. But you told me you knew him well. Yeah, he does, but now he's gonna have personal contact with him. You said it, Chuck, and I got you to tank for everything. Don't thank me yet. We'll have to fight. Maybe it'd be better if you'd take on the tanker. Huh? Oh, isn't it wonderful? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bet $50,000 on you. Now, you see? That's confidence. Mm -hmm. You forget that she's trying to get rid of her money. She hates the stuff. Yeah, that's right, too. Oh, but it's thrilling. When are you leaving? Just as soon as I can. Got to start training. I think you're making a very noble and self-sacrificing gesture. I, I'm sure we're all very proud of you. But this is the first time that you're going to fight without me in your corner. There are a couple of things I want you to remember. Look. Suppose the guy hits you with a left hook. What do you do? You throw up your right guard, you back away, see? Yeah. Now, he sinks one into your midsection. You double up, you double up. Then you grab on, you clinch, and you hang on until you feel better or until you hear the bell, whichever comes first. Yeah. Now, the guy knocks you down in the early rounds. What do you do? You're down, you take a count of nine, and you yeah. get up and you stall, you stall. He hits you again and knocks you down a couple of more times. Well, that should convince you that he really means it. Sure. In that case, I've got a way figured out. Tell me, Chuck, what is it? What do I do? What do I do? You stay down and you let the customers go home early. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute, Chuck. Wait a minute. So far, he's done nothing but hit me. What I want to know is, what do I do if I happen to lay one on his chin? That would be an unexpected development. You'll have to figure that one out for yourself. Yeah. Well, there's still a couple of things I want you to remember. If you've got a scrap of paper, I'll write them down yeah. for you. you got something Who's got a hunk of paper? Hunk of paper. Give him a hunk of paper. Look, I can't write on this telegram. Why don't you deliver it to this guy, Hammond? It might be important. This oh, yeah. Hammond, that's me. Yeah, that's why don't somebody tell him these things? Well, I yeah, tried to, but he was in the house. He wouldn't give me a chance to give it to him. Listen to this. Gilda Parker, care of Chuck Hammond, Shady Acres Farm, California, dear Miss Parker. We want to congratulate you on the effectiveness of your splendid work, which has now reached countrywide proportions. In order to stimulate further interest, your government asks that you broadcast for one hour next Thursday over a hookup, which would be relayed to our friends in South America. South America. We want you to tell them how you are speeding up harvesting with music and rhythm, how you have developed efficiency by making relaxation a part of your routine. Your acceptance of this proposal will be, we are sure, highly advantageous to you and to the country at large, George S. Barr. Hey, that's something, Chuck, isn't it? Boy.
States, Gilda Parker's becoming the most talked about woman in America because of this gigantic farm movement she sponsored. It's terrific. Look at these headlines. Here, Gilda Parker made president of the AFC. Gilda Parker gives large sum of money for bull weevil experiments. Gilda Parker to broadcast at the request of the president. Now, there's no use kidding ourselves, gentlemen. We've got to get Miss Parker back on this lot. Then why did you let her go? I let her go? Who told me to let her go? Who insisted on it? All right, all right. Let's not argue. It's up to you to go up to that farm and sign her. You better fly up there. Don't forget, every studio in this town will have agents swarming around her like bees. And now, ladies and gentlemen of the United States, Canada, and the rest of the world, our distinguished guests, we give you the founder of the most interesting, most patriotic, and most efficient organization to grow out of this war, Miss Gilda Parker. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is not necessary that I outline the achievements of the AFC. But it is, I think, perfectly proper that I say I am proud indeed to be a part of it. I shall not tell you that food is the ammunition that will win this war, because it has been told to you so often and well. But I will say this again. Spend your weekends and your holidays Where? on the farm. Help harvest the crop. Make our policy yours. Work what with relaxation. There's something big in the air. The work well, and the yeah. exercise will not only benefit you, but will pay you the biggest dividends ever declared in this country, victory. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take great pleasure in presenting from New York the number one commentator, the man who gives you tomorrow's news today, Walter Winchell. Good evening, Mrs. America. Cuba, hey, time with Denise Lamp and all the ships to see. Let's get a fast flash. Fly way of the high seas. Exclusive, Brooklyn, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, I just received the wire a few moments ago, which tells me that a terrific windstorm has just swept through the city of Brooklyn. This is the first time the city has been swept in over 20 years. And so winds up another program until next Sunday night at the very same time. Until then, and with lotions of love, we take you to Hollywood, California, for the voice of that grand guy of the silver screen, Mr. Ronald Coleman. Come in, Ronnie. Uh, thank you, Walter, and good evening, friends. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be here and to bring to you at this time our good old friend, that good old soak, Wallace Beery. In a scene from the latest Dr. Kildare picture entitled... The interns dance in the operating room, or may I cut in? Ladies and gentlemen, meet Wallace Beery. Oh, gee, thanks, Mike. See, it's awfully nice of you to talk about me that way. But I'm not the real old soul. Here he comes now. W.C. Fields. Come crying, crying, crying. One of those yells I hear. I've got a short one about now, you, now, have you, now, Wallace? Now, 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 just a uh, moment, just a moment, W.C. Where have you been? I have a little cupcake. I just finished my latest picture. Just finished a picture now. Uh, what was the title of the picture? Why, the name of the picture was The Flower of the South, so she was slightly potted. Now, just a moment, Tom. You see, you know you're looking fine. Now, how do you account for that now? Well, Wally, my little doll, I've given up indulging. Given up indulging? Uh, why? Well, the other night when I come home, I saw the little man who wasn't there. He brought a friend. He was married there. Well, I gotta go now. So long, Wally. I'll see you later. You oh, get like that. Don't I always get me excited. You know that. Don't that's... get excited, Mr. Beery. It wouldn't do you any good. Besides, I've been an orphan for so long, and of course, I used to live with my aunt at one time, but uh, unfortunately, her house caught on fire and burned down. But uh, I didn't set the house on fire. 
I set my aunt on fire, and she in turn set the house on fire. Then I went to live with my grandmother. I love my grandmother. I don't think I'll kill her until next Tuesday. Soothing you? Goodbye. Am I burning up? Out of the way, am I mortified? I'm walking down the street, and I goes into a restaurant, and I orders me a ham sandwich and a cup of coffee. And all of a sudden, a little mouse walks up on the table, takes a bite out of my sandwich, and looks up at me disgustingly and says, you and your whole wheat. What has Clark Gable got that I wish I had when he gets through with it? I got a million of them, a million of them. ha cha cha this is Charles Boyer speaking. It is a pleasure this time to present to you a grand announcer, Mr. Don Wilson. Come in, Mr. Wilson. Well, uh, thank you, Charles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Don Wilson speaking for the brand new Freight Nuts program and bringing to now the star of stars, the only man in the world whose face is holding back television, Jack Benny. Well, well, thanks, Don, for that lovely introduction. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we take great pleasure in bringing to now the originator of the original quiz shows, the one and only Professor Quiz. Is that correct, Professor? Absolutely correct, young man. Absolutely correct. And now my first contestant, right up here to the mic, young man. Well, here I am. Well, just a moment. Who are you? Wouldn't you like to know? Well, I certainly would like to know. Well, let's not get nosy, bug. I get it. Red Skelton. Not Red Skelton in Ohio. I'm a bad boy. Okay, Lou Costello. All right, Lou, before we go on with the questions, uh, now I want to see if you have a high IQ. Come again, Professor Chris? High IQ, high IQ. Well, high IQ, too. Now, just a moment, just a moment. Now, now, now let, let me get on with this question. What is the difference between a Japanese soldier and a woman's girdle? What was that, Professor Chris? What is the difference between a Japanese soldier and a woman's girdle? There's no difference, Professor Chris. They both creep up on you, and it takes a yank to bring them down. I'm a bad boy. You're a good boy, a very good boy, absolutely. Oh. And ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard the last number of the 18th program oh, of the Oh, Jack. Best. Oh, Jack. Why, Kenny. Gosh, Jack, this is a thrill. Why, Kenny Baker. Yes, please? Kenny, will you make up your mind whether you're Kenny Baker or Dennis Day? Same thing. Well, I, I thought you had a new program, or you... Oh, sure, Jack. I got lots of programs, but you didn't know I was a songwriter of late, did you? Why, no, I didn't, Kenny. I... Well, the other night after my program, I sat down and I wrote a new song, and I dedicated it to my mother. Well, that's very commendable, Kenny. You know, today, boys don't think of their mothers as often as they should. What was the title of the song, Kenny? Mother dear, you worked all your life for me. Now go out and work for yourself. <laughs> Kenny, will you sing the song? I know, but sing the number. Tenderly, I will take you by the hand. So very tenderly... What do you suppose is wrong with that Parker? No interviews, no pictures. I've been trying to corner her all day. I'm going to get one right now. Why wait? Wait a minute. No, not now. Let's see what goes on. LeBaron and his orchestra playing the hit song of today, Put It in Reverse, featuring Sonny Fox. Hello, Gilbert. Hello, Joe. <laughs> what brings you here? Let's go where we can talk. Shall we? Come on, let's go. I'm going to get that. Over here. Good to see you, Joe. I've thought of you often. And I've thought of you too, Gilda. And how? <laughs> Come on, Miss Parker, let's cut the comedy. We want a photograph for a spread, Miss Parker. We'll guarantee you a full page. What more can we offer? Hold it, hold it right there, please, Miss Parker. Now listen, boys. There will be no interviews and no photographs. Oh, Miss Parker. Fellas, I don't want to seem ungrateful to you, because you've all been more than generous to me. But it is true that I concede the idea of the AFC my small contribution toward the war effort. 
Its clubs and its many members have been kind enough to make me president of that organization. So to permit myself to be publicized with this movement will not only be the height of bad taste, but it would stamp me as this country's number one heel. Now, what would you do? Well, that's it again. Oh, thanks, boys. I, I thought you'd take it that way. Look, folks, you'll have to excuse us now. We've got a big deal to talk over. Follow us, Joe. I guess. Yeah. Okay, come on. Give that unction. Get in line, be one of the first. When you hit Tuxedo Junction, stop. Put it in reverse. Put on your nifties and kick it around. There's nothing to it. It's easy to do. Down in the 50s and all over town, the gators do it. The hip hooroo. Oh, you will stand out like a headlight. You won't need a doctor or nurse. Just be cautious of that red light. Stop and put it. Oh, stop and put it. Put it in reverse. Tell you it doesn't mean a thing. I know the whole setup. But I could. Oh, do never it. mind that stuff. You do as I tell you, and everything will be all right. Don't be a sucker. All right, Hammond. I'll pay her twice as much as I did before. Fair enough. All right then. What do you want? I want a match. Now. You tell me. But that's no way to negotiate. <laughs> it's the way we negotiate. Of course, if you don't like it, we can always go to the other studios. Now, wait a minute, Hammond. You know how I feel about Gilda. Mm-hmm. I know just how you feel about Gilda. These are your words. Gilda, we must face the fact that this happens sooner or later to every star. You are no longer in the running, end quote. Remember those words? All right. And I'm willing to eat them. Now, I'll tell you something, Hammond, that'll surprise you. I'm going to pay her three times as much as I did before. And I'm going to tell you something that'll surprise you, Joe. I'm not going to take it. <coughs> you heard what I told the newspaper men, Joe. Well, the same goes for you, too. Nobody's cashing in on the deal I have with Uncle Sam. Gilda, we've always regarded you as a... Frivolous, temperamental, moving picture star. Someone not overburdened with either brains or character. But I want to apologize to you. Thank you, Joe. And I want to make a little bargain with you, Gilda. And your word would be good enough for me. The day this war ends, you're back with Zena Studios. And I'll figure. <sighs> Goodbye, Gilda. You know? Someday, he's going to be working for us. What? Watch out. Can't he just come with me? Well, I don't get it. You will. Now look, you stay right here and don't move until I come back. But Daisy, I can't leave the entertainment. But you're not leaving the entertainment. There's going to be plenty of it right here. Tommy! 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 Janie! Janie, how did you get up there? Oh, Tommy, please help me down. I'm so frightened. Well, don't be afraid. I'll catch you. Come on, now. Tommy. Oh, Janie. You wait right here. I've got to go see Gilda. What do you mean by making him fall in love with you anyway? Ruining two people's lives for the sake of a little publicity. I don't know, Daisy. I guess it's because I was thoughtless, selfish. I've always been that way. But I've learned a lot in the last few weeks. So has Jane, I hope. Please believe me, Daisy. I didn't know Tommy and Jane were in love. I just thought that, well, you know. Daisy, 
How am I going to tell him? That ought to be easy for you. You're a big help. And that was the gong for the second round, folks. Canvas Kirby comes out of his corner like a flash. He connects with a hard right of the jaw. Another right. McGraw tries to get in an uppercut, but fails. And Canvas gets over a beautiful right cross. And McGraw is down. McGraw is not only down, he's out of the ring. And Canvas Kirby is the new champion. <laughs> Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting Canvas to the microphone. Here he is. Say something to the radio audience, will you, Canvas? Okay. I just want to say something to Satan folks on a farm in California. You know, folks, what I've done here today, you've done for me. I just scored a knockout, and there's a new champ. But believe me, folks, that don't mean a thing. There's another knockout to be scored, the biggest knockout in fighting history. And that knockout is going to be made possible by the same folks that made this knockout possible. I mean, the folks on the farms. When are you coming home, Canvas? I'll be home tomorrow, honey. Tommy. Hello, Gilda. I, um, uh, I want to say something to you about us. You know, about our marriage. Uh, yeah, Gilda, I wanted to sort of talk to you about that, too. I don't know just how to say this, but you've been awfully kind and everything. But, well, I never hurt anybody in my life, except Jane. And I don't want to hurt you, but... Gilda, I don't love you. Tommy, you mean... Now, please don't be angry with me. I'm awfully sorry, but it's... You mean you're not in love with me? No. Tommy. Oh, Tommy, you've made me the happiest girl in the world. Oh, I was so miserable. I just couldn't tell you the truth, that our marriage was off, that I didn't love you. You mean you don't love me? Gilda! Oh, bye! Gilda, you don't love me and I don't love you. That's wonderful! Oh, bye! It's harder times down on the... And life is a beautiful... I think that's a mighty fine job of harvesting we've just done. What do you think, Uncle Ezra? I think that's the kind of harvesting that's going to speed our victory. What do you think, Plum? Well, you can say that again. Yes, sir, you can say that again. What about you, Abner? Why, well, sure, Uncle Ezra. I think we did a restaurant job. Why, well, do declare. Like a symphony. What's the 